Yeah, I could, I guess. You just gotta find him that. I boxed it. Alright, that was fun. That was quite entertaining. Alright, welcome back to Velocity Launch Systems, everybody. In today's video, we're going to be doing an overview of the previous launch, the first attempt of the thrust vector controlled model rocket. So, we're going to go through the data that we got from the launch the code that was ran on the launch, and then uh, why things failed, what things uh, actually did work, and uh, just going through all the systems and taking a look at the results. So let's get into it. All right, so real quick, I'm going to talk about the systems that I chose to run on this previous launch, uh, including the flight computer, the TVC mount, and the reasons why I did not choose to use the launch pad computer. So starting with the flight computer, I chose to use the most recent development of it, which is made on this uh, custom PCB. It runs on a TNC 4.1, MPU 6050 IMU, and BMP 180 uh, barometer. And so during the launch, the flight computer worked great. We can talk more about it later. Um, but this was no problem. Uh, it's certainly the problem didn't stem from the flight computer. Uh, moving over to the thrust vector control mount, uh, we obviously, right off the bat, we can see some issues with it. Uh, first and foremost being that half of it is missing, uh, and that's because it broke. And we don't really know when it broke. It could have broke uh, at impact with the ground or during launch. I, uh, but that's that. TVC mount worked all right. Uh, definitely some issues here that need to be worked out. But also probably not the the root of all the problems here. Uh, moving into the launch pad computer. So this is something that I've designed within the past like month or two. Uh, and it works pretty good actually. It allows us to use Bluetooth and communicate with my phone. Runs on an Arduino Nano and servo outputs. I mean, it's pretty cool. It can launch the rocket. It can launch the rocket, but for this launch, we really just wanted to keep it simple. If you take a look at the launch pad, you'll see that it's just really uh, just thrown together. And that's because the main focus is on the rocket. We just want to get data. We want to launch the rocket. And I don't want to have to worry about the launch pad uh, when it's not even a necessity, really. It's pretty much just to look cool and just add some extra features. But, thank you. We didn't really need the launch pad computer, so I kind of left that out. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the launch, and we're going to break it down, what went wrong, and uh, at the moment, it went wrong. So I'm going to play this little clip right here. All right, right there. I don't know if you caught that. Let's do it one more time. Now, now to the untrained eye, this may seem like nothing, but to a pro, we can obviously see that something did not go right. Slowing it down, we can see that there's a slight curvature in the rocket's path right at t plus pretty much 0.1 seconds so it keeps that curvature until we have a really cool phenomena happen right here where the rocket actually uprights itself now this could be a coincidence but it's it's probably not because uh, i'm a genius and it, my technology worked but only for a fraction of a second when it then does the same thing again and it goes left now it does this one more time here boom upright and then of course we hit the ground so was it a success to some yes to me yes just to others maybe not but it's all a matter of what your definition of success is and to me success is getting data it's making progress it's taking the next step and today i think we took that next step three two one Is it burning the grass? 
All right, I'm gonna keep this quick here. We're gonna talk about the code a little bit and the different states that the flight computer goes through during launch. Uh, so we start off here in the initialization stage where pretty much, I'll go through an order here, uh, we declare all our variables for our code and we set up uh, everything that we'll need uh, lead, uh, down the line. Uh, in the void setup, we start off with uh, connecting to the SD card uh, so that we can write to it throughout the launch. And then coming down here, we set up our uh, BMP 180 and we initialize uh, our altitude at zero. And then we can start seeing the altitude fluctuations from there. And then we print a couple other things. And then from there, we transition to uh, loop one. And loop one is the pad idle state. So this is the state where the rocket is just sitting on the pad waiting to detect a sudden spike in acceleration, which is gonna be the motor ignition. And so once it detects that acceleration, uh, it'll transition to the launch state. So nothing's really going on at the pad idle state other than reading acceleration over and over again. And then coming over to launch state, that's where the majority of the code lies, and that's where all the problems stem from. Uh, and so this is where we're gonna run the PID control system, and we're gonna run that Kalman filter and the Kalman filter pretty much just takes the gyro uh, angle and the uh, angle derived from acceleration and it kind of takes the, the, the pros of both those and it kind of gets rid of the cons uh, in some regards. And so you have a much accurate, much better uh, reading of your orientation uh, through the IMU, especially under conditions where you have constant acceleration like a rocket. Uh, so we do that up here. Uh, and we get those gyros and the acceleration and we do all that stuff and then coming down here is where we actually have our PID control system and this is where we pretty much define what all the variables are in terms of numbers and values uh, and then once we get that we look at well pretty much we look at our target uh, as far as our orientation which is 90 degrees we want both axes to be at a perfect 90 degrees uh, and then we pretty much look at our uh, deviation from that and then we use our PID control system to proportionally uh, get us back on track to 90 degrees and that's what it runs here and then this is the actual PID control system you can see we can break it down here we have our P we have our I and we have our D and we have that for the X and the Y axes and then we print that and we write that to the servos uh, wherever they need to go to keep it stable and then we come down here and we log the data all on board the uh, SD card so that we can read that later. So that's pretty much just the code. Uh, it's probably It's got a lot of flaws as we can see from the, uh, the launch. The whole thing is smoking. That's just the delay charge. Hopefully. My computer's still on, which means we got that data. Good, good. <laughs> However good it was, we can, uh, we can review the footage and we can see what thrust vector, how it thrust vector, and uh, we'll get some more data from the, uh, from the, the SD card. Well, let's bring it back. Okay. <laughs> um, did that go more or less how you expected for a first that was launch? Pretty much how I expected the first launch to go. All right, uh, so what we have here is the data that we retrieved from the flight computer from this past launch. And so you'll see that there's a lot of data here. But what we were concerned about is this little chunk right here. This is the launch, the rest is garbage as far as we're concerned. This seven second piece of data is, is everything that we, uh, we were working towards. And so some of it's good, a lot of it's bad, and we'll talk about that here. So you can see that we had liftoff right around here at T plus 43 seconds, and touchdown right around here at T plus uh, 47 seconds. So, you know, four to five second uh, flight range. And uh, just going through the altitude here first, it, you know, the data lines up with what we saw visually from the launch. We went up quick, we hit an altitude of about 13 feet, we came down, and then we went back up to an altitude of around 23 feet, which is our apogee, according to the altimeter, and then we, uh, we descend and uh, impact the ground. And so, uh, some of this data, you know, not making a whole lot of sense, 
at zero feet, we definitely did not hit the ground at this point in the flight. So that doesn't really make sense. But you know, a lot of things were happening uh, that were not uh, you know expected. So we can expect the unexpected here. Uh, but the main thing that uh, you know is a concern is these gyros and you know these the, these numbers should not look like this because these numbers are quite consistent throughout the whole duration of the flight and you know looking at that flight that was not a consistent flight whatsoever we should be seeing you know numbers rapidly changing every second we're not seeing that here so we definitely had an issue with the gyros and that could be the stem of uh, what happened if we're not getting good gyro readings we can't be you know the PID won't work and the thrust vector won't thrust vector like it this it ain't gonna work so this could be the problem uh, or one of the many problems that we could uh, attest this uh, but you know so-called failed launch to before you leave make sure to go check out this YouTube channel ice my good friend Dylan this is his YouTube channel and he played a big part in making this launch possible so go check it out link in the description below All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. We'll set that there. Ooh. This actually looks really cool the way I'm holding it. It's like healthy. Okay, guys. Velocity launch systems. Launch one. Success. <laughs> if that's a success, then I don't even want to know what a failure looks like.